Hello, uh, in this video, you are going to learn about seismic gain, uh, their types, and also the uses, how we use this type of gain. So my name is uh, Dr. Yasser, and you are watching my videos. So before uh, we start the lecture, so before that, uh, there are some micro learning outcome. So at, at the end of this video, you will be able to know about the gain function, their types, and use in seismic data processing. So mainly we will be discussing two type of gain, which is PGC, program gain function, gain control, or automatic gain control, which is called AGC. So in depth, we are going to see about the linear and exponential gain, time variant gain, and trace balancing. So these are the key uh, topics for this video. So let's start with the gain, uh, which is, uh, as I mentioned, there is two type of gain, which is automatic gain control and program gain control. So which is called AGC and PGC. So uh, the firstly, I will explain a little bit about AGC, which is automatic gain control. So actually this is the normalization of amplitude for a certain time sample in a certain time window. It's not for, for the whole trace. So it, AGC, you are specifying a certain range of uh, window. So in that you will be defining and ex ex enhancing the amplitude of this trace. So there are obviously some advantages. So this can be, uh, there are some advantages about this. So all the traces are more equal, uh, which is needed for further processing. So the stacking, uh, if you're talking about stacking, so the submission of different traces uh, can be uh, give a better results for, for this game. So the amplification of amplitude for large travel uh, times, when we have the travel times, let's say you have from five to six seconds, which is a large travel time. So on the depth is quite high, then it gives a better result. So obviously with the advantages, we have some uh, disadvantages of this uh, gain. So actually this is no physical base for amplitude, amplitude amplification. So uh, in case of shadow effect, uh, this cannot enhance the amplitude as well. So and it cannot it can lead to the amplification of noise as well because once you are in increasing the signal so together with that you will be having some noise enhancement in your data set so that is a, some disadvantages so uh, moving to the program uh, gain function which is uh, actually the compensation for loss of losses. Uh, during the wave propagation and also the geometrical spreading. So this expression given here is uh, the formula for this uh, program gain function. So together with uh, this function, obviously it has some advantages and disadvantages as well. So uh, actually it's a partial, partially based on physics. So this is one of the benefit of that. So we can have a control on each and every part of the trace. So uh, it's a known function uh, which is coming from the original data, it can be recovered. So once you know the frequency or the amplitude of a given wave, then you can enhance according to that one. So uh, there are some uh, disadvantages, but not so, so much. So its uh, results actually depends on the strongly uh, on the use of the gain function, how you design your gain because it is a program a programmable or the program gain function so that's why you have to program it accordingly which is uh, which is proper as well as this has enough uh, advantages as well so here is a simple example of the uh, pgc which is on the top you can see the signal which is the input signal so you can see the trace like this so once we apply the gain function, which is g of t, uh, which is based on the time. So then we can see uh, this program table gain function we have defined according to the requirement. Because let's say over here you have the higher amplitude, so you don't need a very high amplification. So you define here this dot. Then over here you see the amplitude is decay. So you can define a little bit higher amplification of the amplitudes and so on. So once we convolve this wavelet from here to here with this one, then the output after the amplification of PGC is like this one. 
So this is the output for uh, PGC. So now uh, if we are moving to the time variant gain, which is actually the time uh, compen compensate the decay of the amplitude with that. So obviously it's a time variant. So with the decay of the amplitude, obviously with the time. So if you go to the higher depth or the higher time, your amplitude will be more lower. So usually a time variant gain is com computed uh, and multiplied with the corresponding sample of the seismic trace. So and it can be uh, it can be a linear gain function or either it can be uh, non-linear as well. Uh, we will discuss that thing. The amplitude of the lower event have uh, in improved, but they are still weaker than the top event. So obviously when we are doing TVG time variant gain, so based on time, so the top one will be enhanced or amplified more, but once you're going down, then in the exponential one, so it's, it's becoming uh, weaker and weaker. So the slope, and there's two factor, which is one is the slope, another is intercept, which can be adjusted, adjusted to get the better results. So if you have the slope, based on slope, you can identify your, uh, gain or either based on your uh, intercept. So uh, I, I'm going to show you one example. So this is one of the input data, which is one trace over here. You can see the amplitude is high on the shallow part. Once we go deeper, you have no amplitude uh, over here. So with this, uh, uh, the second one is a linear gain function. So uh, when we apply the linear, so linear is normally your GF is equal to MT plus C, where M is your intercept and C is your slope. Uh, C is uh, your intercept and M is your slope. So over here, you can see this gain function has been applied. So the output trace looks like this one. You see the amplitude at the top is enhanced, but if you go to the down, it's still uh, not as similar to the top one. So then uh, again, we have another uh, exponential type of gain. So, so in exponential, you have the control how you want to enhance your amplitude. So over here, you need uh, less amplification. Once you go deeper, you need high amplification. So once we convolve this input with the function, which is GF over here, then we get the output trace. So this is the optimized uh, value of C, which is the intercept. But once you put the large value of C, then you have you can get the better amplitude in the, in the deeper area as well. So now moving to the time variant gain. Actually, this gain uh, is uh, is uh, used to compensate the vertical decay of the amplitude within within each trace. But it does not take care of lateral decay of the amplitude uh, from near and far traces. So as we are uh, doing some of the uh, offset studies for the first break picking, then obviously for far offset, you will see the decay of amplitude. So now this was the input, but if you go to the output, you, you can see this input trace, the near trace has been enhanced more rather than the far trace. So for this case, uh, maybe we can use some other filters, which I'm going to discuss in a minute. So uh, the another uh, tool, which is called the trace balancing. So in trace balancing, uh, normally used for certain applications such as first break picking require the maximum amplitude of all near and far traces to balance at the user defined RMS uh, amplitude level. So uh, the challenges actually once you're picking the bus break. So this is actually to achieve through the trace balancing which compensate uh, for lateral decay of the amplitude. Uh, so the trace balancing is a time variant type of gain. Actually, it's, it's a part of uh, time variant gain. So here is the um, input uh, trace over here. So then what do you do? You define your uh, amplitude RMS, which is root mean square amplitude. Then you scan the trace uh, to get the maximum amplitude. So over here, you can you can see this. The maximum amplitude is over here. Then you multiply all the trace with this amplitude, which is the maximum. So this trace will be multiplied by a uh, RMS divided by a maximum. So the output of this trace is, looks like this one. So you can see the amplitude has been enhanced throughout the trace. So uh, another example uh, will show the application of the trace balancing to the near and far offset. Uh, it can be seen 
that the maximum amplitude of the near and far traces is uh, is brought to is brought to you it can be seen that the maximum amplitude of the near and far traces uh, in bot to maximum level. So over here, you can see uh, this is the input trace, which is near and far tracing. So now uh, you have the output after the trace balancing. So you can recover all the amplitude, which is equal to the near as well as the far offset. So now if you are comparing our time variant gain versus trace balancing, so what is the difference? In time variant gain, uh, you can have the enhancement of the amplitude at the near as well as as the far but the relative amplitude is not higher so you can see this one is enhanced but this one is still not as much as good as the near one but in trace balancing you can achieve the maximum amplitude which is the uh, which is at the near offset so you can see on the right side uh, it's a tvg and the right um, on the left side is tvg and right side you have trace balancing so now moving to the AGC, which is automatic gain control. So uh, in this, what is the procedure for applying this AGC? So once you have the input trace, uh, which is like this one over here shown. So what do you do? You slide the operator. So you have the operators like this, it will slide uh, over here. And this is the procedure. So then the second uh, sliding will be starting from half of the previous sliding operator. So then uh, it, will, uh, it will compile the gain function and assign it to the middle of the operators, which is shown over here. Now continue, uh, we'll continue this task until the end of the trace, then apply the gain function to the trace. So uh, once we find the best, maximum over here so this is uh, the maximum is here so we have defined the gf1 then based on this one how much do we need the amplitude is this one then the third one and the fourth one like this but in case of my long trace like you have very uh, with the real seismic so you will have multiple points to be assigned so once we convolve this function with this input trace so you can have this output like this one so you can see the amplitude at the shallow as well as at the deeper part has been uh, equalized or it's, uh, enhanced. So the key message uh, for gain function, actually when we are looking for geometric spreading, like your wave have, is decaying with the geometrical spreading. So once it's moved far away from your source, you will have the loss of amplitude. So for that purpose, normally we use these type of gains to improve our seismic uh, wave attenuation factor. So for, uh, for attenuation or convolution, so we can apply the deconvolution. Then uh, for noise uh, elimination, as we have discussed this in the previous uh, topic, which is normally we use the bad pass filter. Uh, thank you so much and uh, hope uh, you have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.